This is the Omtec 30 watt MOPA fiber laser. It is probably the most industrial looking heavy duty fiber laser I've used to date. And for those of you who might be new to fiber laser engraving or laser engraving in general, I've got a pro tip for you later that will help you get up and running with your lasers a lot more quickly. So this is a non-electric lift. It is a manual lift. We've got this nice knob at the top here that we can use to raise and lower the laser. The laser has a 175 by 175 millimeter or 6.9 by 6.9 inch working area. You can get different lenses to increase the working area. And if you're wondering why it's set back a little bit, I actually need to adjust my laser head forward a little bit. No big deal there. It also comes with these nice placement assists. Screw these down where you want. And this can assist you in repeatedly placing your material in the same spot. And I'll show you that a little bit later. So on the control unit itself, it has these nice heavy duty handles for lifting it and moving the unit. This unit has some weight to it, which in some cases is not good, but I feel like whenever I buy a tool that has a lot of weight to it, it just feels more quality. So nice case for the fiber source. You've got your emergency stop button here. You've got a switch for the scan head, and then you've got a power switch for the actual fiber source. So you need to turn all three of these on for the laser to work. Now there will be a startup fan, but that slows down. This is, so I'm standing about a foot and a half from the machine. This is the ambient noise that it makes while it's running. Now, when I'm running the laser, the fans do kick in. It gets a little bit louder, but unlike some lasers that I have where the fans run like a jet engine the entire time it's on, this one doesn't do that, which is very nice. You can also see here on the laser head itself, it has this red line, and then it tells you the focus for this laser head is 369 millimeters to your workpiece. So it does have a scale over here. The problem is... It starts at zero, well above the plate. I mean, you can measure this and add it or whatever, but what I find works best is to simply take a ruler, measure my workpiece to the red line, and it's in focus. So it does have a focus switch that you can turn on. And the idea is that there are two or three red dots here, and you're supposed to, as you can see, I'm moving them apart here. The idea is to focus it. You want to get them to line up and turn into a single red dot, which I, of all the fiber lasers I've used that has this system, has never worked for me. I've never been able to, it's just really hard to tell. So I really prefer measuring. So to focus the laser, what I do is I take my material. In this case, I've got a slate coaster here. I offset it a little bit. And then I take, this is the ruler that came with the laser. Set it on my material. Oh, and quick, quick point. When you get a laser or a ruler that comes with a fiber laser, make sure that the ruler actually starts at the very beginning because some rulers have a gap and then they start at zero and that's going to mess up your measurement. So this one starts at the very end of the ruler. I'm going to set that down on my material and my laser focus is 369 millimeters. So I'm going to crank this up till I get the red line lined up at 369. And then I've got a little handle over here. I can tighten down and lock that in place so that it won't move. All right, let's start with what I call the Vigilante Penguins. Uh, this was an AI image that I got from Imajar and it was pre-made. I just thought it was hilarious looking because it looks like, actually you can't see it right now. Let me do a preview. Can't see it much better. You'll see it in a second when I finish. It looks like these penguins are saying, come to Antarctica and say it to our face. I think it's a hilarious image. So that's what we're gonna use. So let's start, we're gonna frame this. And you can see on the coaster, we've got our framing. And let's say that I wanna do a batch of these. So what I can do is I can line this up with these brackets. Now the problem is, currently, they're not in a good spot. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna find the closest I can. So now I have a repeatable place. However, you'll notice that our frame is outside of that. No big deal. I'm just going to use light burn and move the image. So I'm just going to use the arrow keys, get it roughly where I want, and then I'll hold the control key, which gives me fine control, like a so. And now we're set. I can save that in light burn. So let me close the frame. 
I'm going to save it because the image has been moved. So now we go to frame again. You can see it comes right back to where it's supposed to be. And we are ready to go with this engraving. So let's get it started. Don't forget, laser glasses for safety. Uh All right, we are all done. Now this one came out a little light because I was using an untreated coaster. Let me show you what it looks like when I use a treated coaster. And there is our repeatability. So the one on the left is not treated and the one on the right is treated. And you can see as I move through angle of view here, the one on the right stays much more visible the entire time than the one on the left. So the way that I got this one to be darker is I simply use this Rust-Oleum 2X Satin Clear Coat. I'm not sponsored by them. Trust me, nobody's sponsoring this tiny little channel, but this is just what I use. I recommend the satin. I've tried gloss, I've tried flat, I've tried a bunch of different ones and the satin one seems to work the best. And the satin one is the one that most people that see what I do agree looks the best. So it's a little tip for you there to get darker engravings on your coasters. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention about this laser, as I said earlier, it's very industrial and well-built. Previous fiber lasers I've gotten, the laser head was almost loose on the laser and had a lot of play. This one is rock solid. I'm moving the laser head. It's literally moving the whole laser, not just the laser head. So very, very sturdy. And of course, we can also do anodized aluminum business cards. Where fiber lasers really shine is metal. So we can do some testing on stainless steel. The thing with the Boba Fiber Laser is the color repeatability. It is unmatched. Of You can get colors from a diode, you can get colors from a regular fiber. The consistency with which you can get colors on a MOPA is unmatched. For example, our little Captain America here was done with a fiber laser. Not this one. I'm actually cheating a little bit. I tried to dial in the colors on this one and I was uh, I was trying to cheat and just use settings from the other one and sort of tweak them it didn't quite work and unfortunately I did not have enough time to do full testing for coloring for the Mopo but trust me a Mopo fiber laser will give you solid repeatability when it comes to colors on stainless steel and you can also do deep engravings like I know you can't feel this there's no such thing as feel a vision on YouTube but this is actually down into the metal and of course, one of the big favorites, 3D brass coins. Now, I did goof on this one. I, I forgot to turn on the camera when I was engraving this. So I don't have video of this engraving, but this is a 3D engraved brass coin. One of the most annoying things about getting a new laser is testing and wasting material on testing. So as promised, let me show you a little trick that's gonna help you speed up and waste less material. So here I am on Etsy. Oh my God, I know it's Etsy, but hey, it works. So what I did is I just looked up Omtech Mopa 30 watt library for light burn and lo and behold, they're all over the place. So I will leave a link to the, in the description. I believe this is the one I purchased here and the one I've been using in this video. And it has been really good. Everything that I tested 
worked like it was supposed to with the exception of black on aluminum. That one didn't quite work, but this does come with the caveat that the materials you use will need some tweaking because each laser sort of has its own different personality. So I paid 10 bucks for the library. I imported it into Lightburn and now you can see over here, I've got all these. And in fact, this is what I used for the penguin engraving. And I've got all kinds of different things I can use here as a baseline. And most of them just worked right out of the box. I didn't have to tweak it at all. Some of them, except like I said, the aluminum, the black on aluminum didn't quite work. For any, almost any laser, you can probably go out and find you a light burn library that's gonna speed up your testing time and you'll waste less material. So overall, I think this is a really, really solid laser. It may not be for everyone because it does have a fairly large footprint. So if you're looking for something a little smaller, this might not be for you, but if you're looking for a solid industrial grade laser, the Omtec 30 watt MOPA definitely fits the bill. And I've got a link down in the description if you wanna check it out and learn more about the Omtec 30 watt MOPA fiber laser. Oh, I also have a link down in the description to the Lightburn library that I used for this laser. Thanks for watching.